What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another transfer video for you guys today. Haven't done this in a couple of days with all the football that's been going around with the Premier League season restarting, but the transfer window still has about three more weeks left, we're still trying to push through with a new goalkeeper. We might still be looking for a DM, but I'm going to go in a bit deeper into that into this video. But we're going to talk about Edouard Mendy and a stall in the negotiations with that deal. We're also going to talk about the Declan Rice transfer, which may or may not be happening. We might be looking to wait another season on that, but we're going to delve deeper into that in this video. And we'll also talk about the third round draw a little bit, just to wrap up the video. But before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Press the subscribe button as well and hit the bell notification button to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content on this channel. Now, we'll go straight into the first piece of news and it's Edouard Mendy. And we know that talks have been ongoing for the last couple of weeks between Rennes and Chelsea. And we know that Chelsea have already held personal talks with Mendy and personal terms were agreed between the two parties. Now, Chelsea have submitted a couple of bids. The last bid was an undisclosed bid, with Rennes initially looking for around £23 million in order to complete the deal. But now things have changed, and Rennes realise that they're in a very strong position in this transfer due to our desperate need for a goalkeeper. And because of that, they're now holding on to the goalkeeper more. They want to stall negotiations and try and get the final valuation fee as close as they can to their maximum fee. And... As annoying as it seems, I, I kind of get it from Rennes. Like, we got to be real, we can't be selfish. we got to look at it from another club's perspective as well. And Rennes have no incentive to sell Mendy. They only just brought him in last season. He's their goalkeeper for the future, well, initially planned to be. And as much as Edouard Mendy wants this move as well, Edouard Mendy also is enforcing this. And in the same case... They don't need to sell this guy. Also, selling Edouard Mendy this late into the trans window would put them in the same situation that we're in right now, where we're rushing to try and find a goalkeeper with the season already started, who whatever goalkeeper they go for is going to need to be at max price as well. So I get where Rens are coming from. And it's tough for them. It's jarring for us because we got to try and long out this deal. And it looks like it's going to go closer and closer to deadline day. Which is just going to be more and more annoying as the matches go along. Because we know that means we have to stick with Kepper in goal or Willy Caballero. And we saw how that worked out on Monday. And I'm not going to lie. I bet Rens watched that match. Because I find it a bit funny that these rumours have only just come out after the game on Monday. They blatantly watched the match. They saw, yep, Kepper is still whack. Okay, cool. You lot want a goalkeeper. 30 mil. 30 mil now because I know you lot need it. So that's what I think the situation is. And I don't think that this deal isn't going to happen now. I still think that there's a very good chance this transfer can go off. Fact is, Edward Mendy wants to join, and even in the case of him not doing a courtois and just going AWOL in training to try and force a move, he still wants to go, and that's going to put a bit of pressure on the club to do it. I do also think Marina can work on magic. I don't think that this is the end. We might get pushed to near the valuation, near to 30 mil. I don't even care. Like, goalkeeper for me, for me was the exact same thing I was thinking about left back. I don't care who we get. Just fill the position up because right now the players we have in that position aren't good enough. I was willing to give Kepa the benefit of the doubt for last season. Go new season, new slate. But T-Rex arms couldn't catch another shot. And it was right next to him. And the first thing I thought when that first goal went in for Brighton was Mendy would have saved that. The whole big talk about Mendy is his wig span, his ability to catch crosses, his ability to be big. And Kepa just doesn't has, have that. We got Liverpool on Sunday as well. I was really hoping this deal would get sorted before then because you know how Liverpool love a long shot against us. Hendo's done it. Uh, Salah's done it. Trent's done it. He's done, banged two free kicks in two games against us. Even Cater's banged in a long shot against us. They know what to do with us. Get a bit of space 25, 30 yards out. Lick it at the goal. Find the corner. You'll probably put it into the back of the net. And Rens know that as well. So that's why they're trying to hold out for maximum valuation. There is a chance that we could lower the valuation fee through Fakayo Tomori. I know Rens are now interested in trying to bring him, in, him on a one-year loan. I know there's been rumours about that since the Mendy deal came out. But now they're looking more seriously at trying to bring him in. And I think Chelsea are willing to do it as well. I know Chelsea initially wanted him to find Premier League experience. So he could stay in England and stay in the correct league to develop in. But I also think... For the benefit of all parties, if they want Tamori on a one-year loan deal, it really isn't the end of the, it ain't the end of the world. The one thing he needed was experience and first-team experience. Rens will give that to him. 
So I don't really mind too much of him going to Rennes. Same way I just want a goalkeeper. Can we just drag this one in because it's taking too long? And even though no one's been serious about winning the title this season, if we want to win the title, we are not winning it with Kepa in goal. We need a goalkeeper, even just to compete. And maybe we'll get the best out of Kepa again. I don't know. But just Kepa and Willy Caballero, he's too comfortable. That's not going to work out. We're just going to be the same, see the same bummy performances week in and week out. So, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the, in the comment section below. But please, let's get a goalkeeper in quick. Second piece of news. And um, I hate this, for this to be such a negative transfer video. But we're going to talk about Declan Rice. And David Ornstein has reported on his Ask Ornstein podcast. That West Ham's stance on Declan Rice is still that he is not for sale at any price. And sources close to the club are saying that despite the interest from Chelsea and our recent success with transfers, a move for Declan Rice is unthinkable and would heap even more pressure on the club and their board members. I, I kind of get as well because Gold and Sullivan have really done their best to jar off the West Ham fans for the last few years. And they're already facing heavy, heavy criticism for their youth prospect that they just sold. What was his name? Grady Dian Garner. And I even remember even Mark Noble was tweeting about it. When your own club captain is tweeting out against your chairman, you know the club is an absolute mess. And Chelsea are still interested in bringing in Declan Rice. Frank Lampard is still very keen on bringing him into the team. But... Even with West Ham fans, with West Ham not interested in selling him, Chelsea, there's some voices in Stamford Bridge that aren't happy with the valuation of the fee either, and they're thinking maybe it would make more sense for us to wait another year and try and hold him in and then try and see what happens with West Ham. Because I get it from West Ham's point of view, like right now they've done enough irreparable damage with the fan base and the club. Imagine you do a Lampard 2.0 and you're selling him to Lampard as well. That... Yeah, lucky fans aren't in grounds. I will just say it like that. You'll see like Burnley West Ham vibes again where they all crowded around the West Ham stands trying to get to the owners up in the boxes. But I, I think there's a chance it could happen, but it's a very little chance. It only depends on how much Chelsea really want Declan Rice now. And also if West Ham choose reinforcements over Declan Rice. Because I've said the situation on, on this channel for a good couple weeks now where... West Ham do need to sell in order to bring in re reinforcements and they've struggled to find any reinforcements this summer They've struggled to sell players as well I think that Grady D and Garner was their most was their highest transfer sell this season They have barely brought in anyone. They've only brought in two players So if they need to sell Declan Rice and if they value the reinforcements more than they value Declan Rice Maybe maybe we could see this deal happen. I know they're interested in Emerson as well and I'm sure Chelsea are thinking of trying to use him in the deal to try and lower it down a little bit. And there's still three weeks left of the transfer window. So I don't think that we are going to leave this one in the mud. But there are a lot of stumbling blocks on it. West Ham don't want to break any more West Ham hearts. And they don't want to piss off the fans any more than they already have. Chelsea in the same case, 80 million is a lot. I can't lie, 80 million is a lot. And I don't think anyone would say sign Declan Rice for that. The only way I think fans are interested in bringing Declan Rice to Chelsea is if another player goes the other way or if we find a way to lower it to 50 or 60 million, which with the Marina effect could still happen. I can't lie. That's why I'm still confident with how well we've done in the transfer window over the last year. Trust me, even with West Ham saying it's not for sale, I don't believe that. Kai Havertz, didn't they say like three weeks ago, no virus tax. You get Havertz at the full valuation or you don't get him at all. And we got 70 million taken off it. So realistically, if you're going to look at this for Declan Rice, it could happen. I don't know if it will happen. I don't know if it will happen now. Maybe next season. I think Declan Rice will be a Chelsea player eventually. It's all going to be a matter of time. But... All that it depends on West Ham. It depends on if West Ham really need those reinforcements or if Declan Rice's impact to the team is stronger than anyone else that they could bring in. West Ham need to come to that decision themselves, and once they do, then we'll know for sure whether Declan Rice is going to Chelsea or not. In other news, Chelsea drew Barnsley in the third round of the of the League Cup. Which, in my opinion, is just revenge for 2008 pending. Yes, I am that salty. That was a very deep night. And school the next morning was peak as well. So, yeah, I want revenge on these guys. Ivanovic also signed... Sorry, I've been holding that the entire video. Ivanovic also signed for West Brom. One-year deal as well. Nice to see him back in the Premier League, even though we aren't going to see him in grounds. We got West Brom as well very soon in the season, I think. So, it'd be good to see him back for that match. Also... 
that right hand side will be prone to be getting attacked a lot. Like if you lot remember Ivanovic 15, 16. So if this is the same Ivanovic, we're going to have a lot of fun down that right hand side. But it is great to see Ivanovic back in the Premier League. But guys, this is the end of the transfer video. Let me know your thoughts on Declan Rice and Edward Mendy down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.